Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, thanks for coming here today. Uh, if you're here for Phil, you're at the right place. Uh, if you're not um, by mistake here, uh, well, the door is locked. <laughs> you have to wait here and uh, until I finished. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sho Ho. I work for Broadcasting Board of Governors, the federal agency that oversees Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, Radio Free Asia, Radio and TV Marty, and so on. Together, those broadcasters bring news to people around the world in 60 languages and reach 175 million people every week. Um, I do some internet anti-censorship R&D and other IT related stuff. And I also create foe. Uh, let's talk about censorship. We live in the United States and we can browse the internet freely. Well, almost except when you're using your company or public libraries, networks, or if you work for the DOD. <clears throat> However, for internet users live in certain countries, things are not so bright. Some governments censor what their internet users can see. See, uh, for example, you're in China, and you want to browse the Voice of Americans website, you are likely get an error message from your web browser telling you the website doesn't exist or that you cannot connect to the website. Uh, this is probably because some governments think uh, Voice Americans website is evil. If you ever laid eyes on the Voice Americans website, you the evil force will probably infect you with some terrible disease, cause you to vomit yesterday's compound chicken, and make your head spin like your grandfather's turntable. But seriously, um, governments censor the internet for different reasons. Some vow to protect their citizens from porn. Uh, others censor the internet for their own political gains. There are many ways that a country can censor the internet. The most common method is to use some type of firewall to block IP addresses, domain names, uh, protocols, and uh, network packets. Most countries use blacklists to keep track of uh, indecent websites. However, some countries, such as China, have very sophisticated uh, censor censorship systems that are capable of blocking validating web pages on the fly. In other words, if the system detects that web page contains uh, indecent materials, <clears throat> the system can disconnect it, the connection between the user and the website on the fly. Um, so here's the big problem. Some internet users in censored countries want to read Voice Americans news. However, the website is inaccessible, and so are the RSS fee, the Facebook page, and the Twitter updates. The number of ways that a user can circumvent the censorship. First, um, you can try to find a web-based proxy such as the ones maintained by Siphon. However, unless you know where to look or have some social connections, web-based proxy can be hard to find. Second, you can download some circumvention programs, uh, such as FreeGay or Tor. In many ways, these programs are more secure and offer better support for multimedia contents than web web-based proxies. Third, you can purchase VPN access. This is the one case that many can buy uh, happiness. If you can afford the price, 
paid VPN service is probably your best bet for circumventing censorship. VPN supports most network applications, so you can use it uh, to bro uh, browse web, streaming videos, uh, use FTP to download files, check emails, or do almost everything with it. So now there will be soon a new tool. Uh, it's called Foe. FOE stands for fee over email. Uh, FOE was created to serve two purposes. First, allows users to receive email contents such as RSS feeds, documents, or small programs. Second, provides an additional channel for other circumvention tools to reach their audience. As the name implies, FO is based on email technologies. Uh, but exactly what is FO and how it works? I find the simplest explanation is by telling people the FO sends contents, such as ISS feeds through emails, much like attaching a file in the email. Uh, most people will get the idea, but we'll ask the question, why do we need phone then? Mm, you know, that's a tough question. <laughs> but I finally came up with a good reason. Phone fetches the content for you, uh, with, whether it is an ISS fee or downloadable program or a document. Without foe, you won't be able to get the content you want because the target website is blocked in the country where you live in. To many people, email is just email. There's nothing special about it. However, there's one thing that most people overlooked. Uh, it's more difficult to block an email than to block a website. Why? A website usually has a dedicated IP address or a dedicated domain name, or both. It's quite unusual that a, a website will change its IP address and the domain name regularly, or else your customers won't be able to find you. An email, on the other hand, can be sent from a different email address and a different mail server. The only thing that a sender needs to reach you is your email address. In addition, you, if you are using an email service in a free country, such as Gmail or Hotmail, there's no way that a sensor can block the emails that are received, even if the sensor knows the sender's email address. So the only way for a sensor to block all offending emails is to block all foreign email servers. So unless you live in North Korea, well, Mr. Kim is basically saying that no one needs to have contact with outside world. It is highly, highly unlikely that a country will block all foreign email servers. And this is what Fo is betting on, that will always be able to obtain an email account from a service provider that is outside of your home country. So Foe can use it to fetch contents for you. Now let's look at the more complicated version of how Foe works. When a user re requests a content, say, for example, uh, RSS feed. The full server will fetch the content from the RSS server, pack the content into an email, and then send the email to the user through the full mail server. Once the email arrives the user's mail server, the full client will initiate an encrypted connection to the mail server and download the email security. 
the full client would then extract the content from the email and pass it to the user. Please note, uh, there are two critical components in the diagram. Number one, the, connect the connection between the full client and the user's mail server must be encrypted. The purpose of the encryption is to second when content filtering imposed by the government. Number two, the user's mail server is outside the sensor region. In other words, the user must obtain an email account from a service provider outside he, her, or his home country. The reason is to prevent the sensor from forcing the service provider to block for emails. These two components are the keys which allow foe to effectively deliver contents to users in sensor countries. Um, now let's look at some key features that foe offers. Foe can deliver ISS or other contents to the users. Foe is capable of circumventing internet censorship. Um, unlike web-based proxy, Foe does not need to cha keep changing its IP address or domain name in order to circumvent censorship. Foe is capable of pushing contents to the user when necessary. This is useful if Foe ever needs to patch a critical security flaw or need to make an emergency announcement. So foe is t very difficult to block. In order to effectively block the foe service, the sensor needs to be block all foreign mail servers. If you are a developer and are interested in writing your foe software, you will be delighted to know that foe is easy to implement because it is based on email technologies. You can find a lot of software libraries on the internet that will allow you to create your own version of foe easily. We will also make foe source code available, available to the public so you can use it in your software as well. Because of foe relies on email technologies, it has relatively low in infrastructure costs if you decided not you need to host your full server. So, foe is not a silver bullet for an internet censorship problems. Here are some limitations. Foe needs the user to set up foreign email accounts. Although it shouldn't be too difficult, it is an extra step that users need to take in order to use Foe. Foe is not designed to deliver large size contents. For example, users cannot use Foe to get video files. Foe also is not designed for web browsing or other texts, which the users expect immediate feedbacks. Unlike web-based proxy, users need to download full client in order to use the full service. This can become a challenge if the full project website is blocked in the user's home country. Uh, this is not a problem unique to full. Other circumvention tools also have the same challenge. Unlike Tor, FreeGate, and Siphon, Foe is not a proxy solution. It is created to help users to receive small contents such as RSS, small programs, documents, and new proxy addresses. Since Foe is based on email, it can easily be put to uh, other platforms. In its initial release, Foe will support Microsoft Windows only. However, 
We hope to release versions that will support other platforms uh, in the near future. And that we are particularly interested in the mobile platforms such as Android and the upcoming Windows Phone 7. We are planning to release the public beta in uh, September. So please follow us closely on our project website. We will release the full client, its source code, and the documentation at the same time. We hope that you can help us to test the full system um, where, after it is released. Um, have help full. Uh, while we have some ambitious goals, we have very limited uh, resource and manpower. So it would be great if you can help. So if you have the programming skill and have some free time, you might want to give it a shot and create your own full client. Another way that you can help us is to tell others about full. The more people know about FO, the more support, support we may get. So please um, spare the word. Also, if you have suggestions on how we can improve FO, please don't hesitate to let us know. To summarize what I have talked about today, um, FO is a tool to complement other circumvention tools. It can help other circumvention to developers to keep in touch with their users. FO is designed to deliver small contents to users. FO is very difficult to block. And also FO is a not a proxy solution and it can help users to obtain other proxy programs. FO is not designed for web browsing or other activities that requires immediate feedback. Um, if you are interested in testing or developing FO, please check our website regularly. I will try to keep it up to date as much as possible. Here's the address code.google.com slash p slash FO dash project. Okay, again, thank you very much for attending today's section. And I would like to also thank DEF CON giving me the uh, opportunity to speak in front of everyone here today. Thank you.